Tom E. Curran, NBC Sports Boston. Sorry for making you wait there a little bit, Tommy. I don't know. Kyrie called in. We didn't, I don't know if he wanted to talk a little bit, which we gave him. Um, first question. Kyrie, honestly, I'll, I'll be candid. <laughs> Kyrie yeah. loves to talk about football. He does. <laughs> there is no debating how much he loves to talk about football, and I'm sure that he will call back right at yes. the end. He's and, a great guy. And, and we a love great him. Ad. And we love him. I'd love to have him on another time. It was just right when you called. Um so, I'm going to ask you, Bill Belichick basically came out, and I guess that's him announcing him as the starter on Sunday, even though for some reason he can't say that word. Is the quarterback controversy over on this team? I think it's very much over for the time being. But when Bill won't engage in a hypothetical and make proclamations the way he did with Cam Newton, we have to immediately say, okay, well, why? And I think it's mainly because Bill doesn't know what to expect from his quarterback, which is kind of probably a terrifying place for him to be in. With Cam Newton... He knew he was a middling quarterback, overmatched passer, could generate stuff on the ground, and it was a team that wasn't going deep. This is a team that should be expected to sniff around the playoffs, maybe get into them, and they should be able to rely on the quarterback. But the way he's performed since the bye last year, and really since the beginning of the year, capped by Monday's performance, even if he had three weeks off, has Bill saying, look, probably going to be the starter, but if he goes out there and throws four picks and has two fumbles, I mean, I'm not going to be sitting there hung by my own words that I said he was going to be the starter. So I really think he has to establish his level. It's a critical two months. You're right. It is a critical two months, which uh, which I'm nervous about because I do think that he has to stick with one guy, declare it, at least in their meetings, and then just kind of deal with the issues, uh, Tom. So my question is to you, how does a formerly detailed-oriented QB – become so reckless, stupid, and suddenly can't read defenses. How does that happen? The offense that they implemented featured a little bit more swashbuckling activity. Go ahead, Matt. We want to push it down the field. Are you serious right now? Like that, that's your, that, yeah, that's your am. honest no, 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 answer? No, 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 100%. 100%. Swashbuckling? I'm... What? <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm using a smart ass yeah, word. Yeah. Chris. I know, like I know, I know. Keep going. Point, no, but I'm, I'm, the overall point is they yeah. want to press the ball down the field. They realize the team in their division that owns it is the Buffalo Bills, who scores 30 a game. They can't run out there and play like the 2018 Patriots, most likely. So they put in an offense that said, take advantage of your decision making, make smart and prudent decisions down the field, and complete passes. And whether Mac took that as a green light to go off half cocked and start throwing punts which on occasion he has, even in the ones that haven't been picked, like the Miami game on a couple of fourth and threes and third and shorts, you know, those are decisions too that we don't really scrutinize. And I'm big on Mac, and I think that he has been, you know, strapped to the, to the tracks here a little bit by the Patriots coaching staff. They asked him to be more aggressive. He's been more aggressive, and now they're pissed at him that he's making mistakes. Be that as it may, I think that they invited this, and I think that Mac, to an extent, to Christian, believes he had what control, latitude, uh, carte blanche to learn on the fly and nothing was going to happen, and I think he found out differently. Mm. I like the strapped to the tracks. I like that analogy. You end it strong. The swashbuckling thing wasn't really feeling. <laughs> I the like it. Strapped to the well, tracks. Well, on the swashbuckling. I love it. No, I love the strap right. to the tracks. I speak He's a like pirate. a damsel in distress. Now he has a peg leg. He's kind of a pirate. <laughs> He's a pirate I think now. it makes sense to me, okay. Tom. Uh, I do want to ask you. So there were some kind of conflicting answers given both by Mac and by uh, Bill following Monday Night Football about that early yank from Bill. Hey, it wasn't a benching. It wasn't performance related, but it came right after an interception. Have you gotten any more clarity about what the real plan was going in there with the quarterbacks and how the interception may have played into that plan? I can only read by what Matt's reaction was and Matt to be so effusive in his appreciation for having the opportunity to play leads me to believe that it was three series and out. No matter how ugly it ends, it's going to be three series and out. Now, was that, again, something that Bill, maybe in his autobiography when he turns 90, will say, I wish I could have had that one back? Maybe, because you don't want your 24-year-old or whatever he is starting quarterback to hear 68,000 people cheering for his departure in his second year. It just, it was not ideal. And Bill probably said, you know, was of a mind, like, whatever. I mean, I got a game to win here. But in hindsight, 
is something that they're going to have to remove the dent from. But I don't think it's it certainly – the question we have to pose again, to get back to the word, is hypotheticals. If the Patriots were up 13 to nothing after that drive instead of being intercepted, would he have taken them out? No. And if it was 23 to 21 in the fourth quarter, would he have put them back in? I mean, the place would have mutinied. Yeah. Hmm. Tommy Curran joining us on the Harbor One Hotline from NBC Sports Boston. So you don't see a scenario where this leash is, leash is short, even this Sunday? Like he just has to stick with them? He he chose a tough couple of I words did. there. Yeah. Leash is short. No, I, I think I, I see I see a leash. Put it that way. In a game? Or is it, are we talking about like, because I can envision like, you know, I'll give you a couple of games. By week we talk about That's exactly it. what I'm driving at, though, Lou. I think that Bill can envision this kid doing anything at this point, which is stunning compared to where he felt the kid was in July. You know, play back that Mike Lombardi sound oh. uh, that he had a few weeks ago when he lacerated back. He did it again today, yeah. Tommy. Oh, good. Yeah, because it really <laughs> it matches up a little bit with what could be Bill Belichick's beliefs. Look, the kid's fine. I, I'm a big believer in him. But right now, anything seems possible with him. So as a result, if he starts going off, as I said, half-cocked, we have a little buzz cut guy who can come in and replace him. Yeah, and, and, and that to me, the, the ceiling is very low for the buzz cut guy. Uh, but here's the thing, though, um, um, Tommy, because we were like went through a bunch of different teams that had column quarterback controversies, and they never ended well, none of them. And then the one thing that they all had in common, that all the quarterbacks that were in that particular court controversy with that team, none of them were any good. So is that the problem? What the Patriots right now is that the ultimate option, like neither one of them are, are good enough to be the starting quarterback? Yeah, I mean, you, you raise a great point. I just don't know whether this is a quarterback controversy or not in the, the eyes of the Patriots, or is it a kid in a slump who's still adjusting? We think it's a controversy. I, I personally don't think it is because I think the disparity between Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi as players, despite what we've seen in the last nine games statistically – I think the disparity is too great. And I look at that Baltimore game still. Oh, zero touchdowns and three picks. Whatever. He threw stuff that Bailey Zappi won't be able to throw the rest of this year and may not be able to throw next year. Matt Jones was electric (laughs) at moments during that game. So I think there's too great a disparity between the two players to say that there's a quarterback controversy. But you're right. Once a team starts questioning it. Yeah. And can't you know, go backwards. I guess it's, by the end of the day, they got to figure out: do we have the guy, or do we have just a guy? And if we just have a guy, are we okay with him being a placeholder for two more seasons, not picking up his fifth-year option and, and diving back into the draft, or does somebody want to try and fix him, and we'll try and find somebody else? Tommy, real quick: uh, three and fourteen, seeing the Jets have a tough-looking December on the calendar. Do you see this team getting into the playoffs? Yes. Whoa. I, I, I mean, I, 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 well, they were eight and nine in my preseason prediction. But last week when they went to three and three and they were about to play the Bears, I said, oh, they're about to go to four and three in prime time. The sky's the limit. So I can't be that big a reactionary to five days later say no shot. I think Mac Jones is pretty good. And I think that he, against all recent evidence, will start to play pretty good. But, yeah, I think they can make the playoffs. You, Meg? I did. I, I had them at 9-8 and eight at the start of the season. No. I, I know. I, I just don't see it. I don't see it with the division. I hey, think it's too tough. Tommy, last one for me. The, the play calling, disparity between these two guys, at least for the first six games. What Do you, do you want these guys? Do they, does Mac Jones deserve to kind of, he said he deserves a start, more play action, more RPOs, more creativity that may, it looks like they're giving to Bailey Zappi? Yeah, he deserves to be able to work from the same things that become advantageous for Bailey Zappi. Now, if he's not having those run for him because the Patriots think he's more advanced and can deal with fewer people in protection and the offense can be more explosive with, you know, five guys out in the route as opposed to more guys in protecting, well, then the Patriots might have to reconfigure that. But the notion of sabotage, the notion of egos rising up and saying, I want Bailey Zappi, so I'm going to kneecap Mac Jones, that's really – um it's really lodging uh, an allegation of unethical behavior mm-hmm. against the coaches mm-hmm. that I think is mind-bending. 
And whether it's Chris Sims or Greg Bedard, that's basically what they're saying. The Patriots are purposely calling ass plays for Mac. And then when Bailey gets in there, it's, let's run the good ones now. Right. We're going to get Mac <laughs> out of here. Crazy. Right. right. I mean, how absurd does that sound on the face of it? But that's what's being contended. And then we just all nod and move on. That's nuts. Yeah, I would agree with you 100%. Tommy Curran, NBC Sports Boston. You can see him down there. Quick slant. See him. They use him every single night. I'm sure he'll be in there tonight. I'll see you a little bit later on, Tommy. Thanks for joining us, pal. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Thank Thanks, you. Tom.